All right, today I'm going to be reviewing the third edition of the Common Man's Reference Bible. This Bible is uh, edited by Dr. David Allen Hoffman. And you can see here on the spine it has Holy Bible, 1611 Authorized King James Bible, the Common Man's Reference Bible, and Hoffman. It's bound in a, an exquisite lambskin. And you can see that it has the raised hubs on the spine. Just a very nicely bound Bible. Physical attributes are very nice. And you can see that uh, the grain on that uh, lamb skin and the nice tooling work here. And of course the stitching around the perimeter. You open it up and it has lamb skin stamped on the inside cover. And that's also a leather lined, it appears to be. Very flexible, very well made, and um, yeah, I've been doing reviews of King James Bibles for quite a while, and the Common Man's Reference Bible was kind of a glaring omission from my repertoire of video reviews, and um, I guess the reason for that would be that I hadn't had an opportunity or hadn't taken the time, whichever way you want to look at it, to really investigate it. And uh, I like to do my research and my, my homework prior to reviewing anything, just because I like to do it justice, especially, you know, to the author of it. And uh, so I, I emailed Dr. Hoffman a couple of times, and he was very gracious, and he gave me some background information on the Common Man's Reference Bible, and um, just a real nice guy. Um, the uh, the name Common Man's Reference Bible is uh, inspired by a quote from William Tyndall, where he's talking to a Catholic priest, and he says, "I defy the Pope and his laws, and if God allow me to live ever many years." I will make it so that the plowboy knows more about the scriptures than you do. <clears throat> so, just knowing that was really cool to me because I'm a huge, huge fan of William Tyndall. And I have both of his um, editions of the New Testament, the 526 and the, no, the 1526 and the 1534, and his 1530 Old Testament. So, that was really cool to know that. So want to share that and um also here's the presentation page and you can see compared to the white cardstock it has a, a yellow parchment type look to it which makes it look really classy in my opinion and it has a marriage coverture here and two pages of births two pages of marriages and two pages for deaths and here's the title page to it And I got, I asked um, Brother Hoffman if he would sign mine, and he uh, graciously did that, as you can see there. So that's really nice. And um, one thing I like about this Bible, just right off the bat, there's the printing of the first, second, third edition. I like this too, since the Word of God is not bound. Any honest and sincere use of the maps, marginal references, footnotes, text, and comments in this work is granted. No monetary gain for use is granted. Dishonest use is forbidden and unlawful. So that's kind of nice. You can use it in a Sunday school class or a Bible study if you want to print it out and uh, pass it around. Everybody can have a copy of it. That's, that's really nice. So I thought that was good. But one thing I like about this Bible off the bat in the preface right here is the first sentence he says the common man's reference bible exalts the words of the authorized 1611 king james bible so right off the bat i liked it you know but uh like i said i hadn't really i didn't really know anything about dr hoffman at all um because i've heard varying opinions from people so but i wanted to check him out for myself and uh, here's the interior title page of Genesis you can see there has a very nice margin all the way around and it lays flat at Genesis 1 so how many Bibles do you know that do that right out of the box 
and I just got this one yesterday. So right out of the box, lays flat at Genesis 1. And you can see the margin space is, is ample all the way around the text. And it looks to be about a nine point. And it's laid out very similar to a Schofield reference Bible as far as the numbers correspond with the notes down here at the bottom. I like how he just comes right out there with the, uh, the first one about debunking the religious philosophies of man, atheism. Just, you know, come out right out the gate. I really like that. <clears throat> um, this one up here says evolution requires more faith than creationism because evolution is a proven farce through scientific observation while creationism is proven right by science. An evolutionist is truly an absent-minded professor. Uh, so just right out the gate there, you know, I've always been the type of guy that if you're going to pick a side, you know, pick it. You know, I like that. And also what I like about this is the notes, his own personal notes here in the bottom, are, you know, basically so that the common man can understand, you know, the scripture and he really lays it out. And uh, so the more erudite among you may not like that or appreciate that but um, having been a seminary student myself it was like a breath of fresh air reading this and uh, just laid out really nice um, I can't really express them but the paper is 36 GSM so it's, it's a really nice paper quality and very minimal ghosting involved there you can see a little bit through the paper but um I was going to take you to the one, one reference in particular that I liked in Malachi chapter 2 verse 3 here where he talks, he says, I will corrupt, behold, I will corrupt your seed, spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts. It's pretty, pretty powerful words from God there regarding the nation of Israel and their feasts he's talking to the apostate priests you can see the heading up there but when you go down in the notes even he's like wow what a way to talk about someone's religious rights and it says nowhere in scripture does it command anyone to respect the religious beliefs of another especially when the vain beliefs are based upon lies and hypocrisy so that's i like that that's really good so i want to point that out and there are some things that I've read that I don't necessarily agree with, but, um, you know, and, and while I was doing my background on this, I took the time and listened to his series called Seven Sure Steps to Understand the Scriptures, and there were like 20 sermons in that series. And I listened to all of them, and in one of them he says, if you believe everything that a man teaches... It makes it a cult so i kind of like that so you don't, you don't necessarily have to agree with everything that he says but what i do like is that it encourages you to study for yourself at the very least and there's a plethora of study information in here as you can see um just i really just enjoyed looking through this thing it's, it's really been an interesting uh study for me so and also, I want to point out in the back here, I'm trying to turn it without ripping my pages because it's windy out here. But uh, there aren't any, um, there's no concordance. So you don't have to worry about that. So you get to the end of Revelation, and you got these uh, lined pages for notes, and there are 16 of them, I believe. I counted them, but I'm, I have a horrible memory with certain things. There's a few, you know, <laughs> less than 20, more than 10, like I like to say. So quite a few pages for notes, and the maps I really liked. And they're, they're all full color, and this one here is the, the original Abrahamic land grant. And uh, it's going to make a few people upset in Iraq and Iran here, <laughs> and Egypt too. So... But there it is, and um, the mountains of Ararat, you know, the Bible talks about they went east to the plain of Shinar. 
they came from the east. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm messing that up. But anyway, what I wanted to mention though is the fact that this is an accurate map as far as biblically speaking. So I like that. And also this one, the uh, the route of the Exodus. As far as I know, this is the only Bible, the only study Bible that I've found that has the Exodus route where they actually cross the Red Sea at some point. Most of them will have them, you know, touching the tip of it somewhere. And you've heard um, you've heard uh, scholars say that they crossed the Reed Sea and it was a mistranslation. Which, if that's true, then you know the Reed Sea was only three feet deep, and somehow or another God drowned the entire Egyptian army in a three-foot body of water. You know, either way, it would be a miracle. But I think this is <laughs> the more accurate description and he has Mount Sinai over here rather than the traditional site over here so really interesting I like that too and there's 12 color maps then you have the promised land route um, the general locations of the tribes and let's see the time of Christ and this one is the kingdom of David and he gives you the scripture reference there. Which I like that too. And you know, basically, from what I'm gathering from what I've read and what I've heard in his sermons, is the King James Bible pretty much explains itself. It defines itself. You don't need the Greek. You don't need the Hebrew. And you know, that's kind of always been my philosophy. I just didn't know that there were... Um, there's any way to explain that to people because most of the time people just think well you're just ignorant and you don't want to be educated in Greek and Hebrew but I've always been like well if God gave me the Bible in English why can't I just use my English Bible and study that why do I need to learn the languages you know and that's kind of his philosophy and I really like that I really line up with that so although I don't agree with every single note in here I can certainly agree with that, you know, and, um, and, you know, there's another, like, right here, Genesis 1-2, um, you know, like, more of a judgment between verse 1 and 2 from the kingdom of Lucifer and the first worldwide flood, so, you know, I, I've never really investigated that or thought about that, in my opinion, that's, that's more like a, a personal opinion of, how you interpret that scripture but if anything it's designed to make you think because I haven't really ever seen anyone say that so I think Schofield mentioned something about a gap theory so maybe that's what that is the gap theory but you know I haven't generally held to that but it's not something that you know you have to disassociate with someone over so I can definitely appreciate his willingness to uh, put this all down for the common man you know someone who hasn't been to seminary school and you know wants to learn more about the scripture this is a really good bible um i'm going to show you the like right there in the middle this is a lot of space there to take notes and you add that and the, the line pages in the back and you got a a really good note-taking bible so, I like it in general. Um, once I heard there was a third edition, I just wanted to get one. So, uh, you know, I, I looked on his site, and it's called Pure Words of Truth. And there's no, um, there wasn't anyone, there wasn't a third edition available at the time. So I emailed him. That's how this whole thing got started. So it turned into something more, which the Lord blessed me, and I was able to actually talk to the guy that authored it. So that's always a plus for me i wasn't expecting him to answer my email actually i figured he'd be busy or out doing something but, uh, he actually got back with me so there's matthew just wanted to kind of show everybody matthew there real nice but um so what are the differences between the third edition and the second edition so since i'm talking about it i guess i'll I'll touch on that. Uh, also, forgot to mention, this Bible comes in a 
very nice blue box so you can store it in that if you don't use it every day and you want to keep it looking nice you know but it's definitely not going to get hurt in transportation when you order it and this bible is 107 dollars on his website and i'm gonna put a link up in the description so you can look there and see where to order it and here is the second edition and you can see that the second edition is a little thicker and that's due to the fact that this one has 22 pound paper and this one has 28 and that equates to a 36 gsm paper in the third edition as opposed to a 40 gsm in the second and so this paper is really really good quality in the second edition and i just got this recently in a trade with somebody and it had someone's name on it there so i kind of took that off but uh this is the cowhide version and this is still available also on his website and this is this the cowhide version is 88 dollars if you want the second edition but um the maps are different they're not as many and they're not um some of them are the same but not just generally speaking this the uh, abraham land grant one isn't as detailed um the path of the exodus isn't as detailed um so and i've noticed i did find a note or two that was different as far as at the bottom of the page so if you're really a fan of the common man's reference bible i mean why not spend a hundred dollars and get the third edition even if you just want to take notes in it and read out of this one generally you know because the paper quality is just a little better but they're both really great bibles and i have a first edition here that i was able to get before they sold out and um me being on the small side of average this one's much easier for me to hold because it's thinner and it uh, has a little less quality paper but not enough to make me not want to read from it you know what i mean so if i was going to take something to church and uh, this would probably be the one i would grab but uh, it has the um, the older style cover um, from 2004 so i think it's like a goat skin grain with a bonded leather lining so it's not as flexible but i like how it looks you know it just looks really sharp so anyway i just wanted to show the first second and third editions because uh i just have them all so i got the common man's trilogy <laughs> so to speak um just a real nice you know study bible all together um if i was going to say anything in the way of negative you know like i said me being on the small side of average you know to sit and hold this and read it it's uh, a little big for me uh, especially with the center column reference there and with the references right here the gutter i mean the references with the uh the uh, the, the margin there in the, the gutter just makes it just a little wide to, to hold comfortably it actually reminds me of a Cambridge Concord wide margin if I was going to compare it to something. Uh, even in paper quality, I would say it's quite good. And for only a hundred dollars, I mean, he's obviously not trying to gouge you. Cause that's that's a good, good uh, price for this Bible in a lambskin like this. So you can still get the second edition and the cowhide here is eighty eight dollars. That's after shipping. So total $88 for the cowhide. I think he still has some calfskin ones that are 96, but they sold out of the lambskin. So, and this one is 107 in the lambskin. So real nice quality stuff. Just really enjoyed delving into it and studying out of it. And I'd have to say, you know, my in my top three right now as far as Bibles that I enjoy using. Um, you know, I've always been a real huge fan of local church Bibles because of their stance on the King James. And, but this guy here, study Bible-wise, you know, he doesn't put anything in the, in the references or the notes that are, you know, critical of the King James text like Schofield will do. Like, you know, if you look in Mark chapter 16, 
Um, most study Bibles will have most manuscripts or the best manuscripts omit these verses and nothing like that in the common man's reference Bible. Just nothing but total love and admiration and exalting the Word of God in the King James Bible. So I highly recommend it. And, you know, and, and asking around in my acquaintance, you know, in the Bible community, um, got a lot of different varying opinions about this Bible. I was really kind of surprised because, um, I, you know, I haven't really uh, asked about it much. But when I did, you know, it was one of those people either loved it or hated it. So, you know, I guess this is going to kind of be a divider <laughs> between a lot of people. But I didn't see anything in it that made me balk necessarily. You know, I liked it a lot, and uh, I just really admire the guy's stance on the King James Bible. And I enjoyed the series, uh, Seven Sure Steps to Learn the Scriptures. And if you haven't heard it, you know, go to goodpreaching.com, look up David Hoffman, and it's on there. That's where I saw it. And uh, a couple of YouTube channels, people had it on there. But uh, real good stuff. I enjoyed it. So anyway, this is my review of the third edition of the Common Man's Reference Bible. Um, I hope this has been helpful to you. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. Maranatha.